And if there is one thing that I think is responsible for the most change in meditation that I've seen, it is the development of a a one-pointed mind. And so the practice of meditation is about developing a one-pointed mind. So let's just think a little bit about this. So here's an analogy for you guys, okay? So let's say I have a light bulb. So if I have a light bulb, then the light is like shines out in all directions, right? So that's just kind of what light does is like you're, you're sending rays in all these different directions. And that's pretty cool. But like a light bulb doesn't do much besides provide sight, right? It provides light and that's what a light bulb is for. If you get really close to a light bulb, you can start to feel heat, but it doesn't actually affect any change in the world. It just offers some illumination. So a light bulb is a case of a source of light that is dissipated in all directions. Compare that to a laser beam. So a laser beam is a source of light or multiple sources of light that are concentrated through a focus. And like, just think about what a laser beam can do. A laser beam can like literally cut through things. And if you think about sort of the the energy from a light bulb and the energy from the laser beam, Those are relatively, I mean, in theory, they can be somewhat similar, but the difference between a light bulb and a laser beam is that one has like a focused, kind of like a concentration of energy and focus, and the other one is dissipated. So when I teach people to meditate, one of the main goals that I have is to to help them create a concentrated mind. And then once you concentrate all of your mental energy and you train yourself to keep it in one area and focus it, a lot of wonderful things start to happen. So the features of a concentrated mind are there are three that we're going to talk about. One is that it focuses. So this is kind of the ability to follow through, which we'll talk a lot about. And, and this is, I think, the, the main reason that I wanted to talk about this today. The second is that it creates a relaxed mind. And the third is that it creates an, like an, a sensation of enjoyment. So a concentrated mind leads to kind of follow through, leads to relaxation, and leads to enjoyment. So we're going to talk about the first one, which is focus. So a strong mind is one that is focused, and a weak mind is one that is, is dissipated. So it's, it's spreading his energy in lots of different areas. And if I had to kind of go through what I think the central problem of a lot of people that I work with today, it's that they have a weak mind. And what I mean by a weak mind is that their mind is dissipated. It's going in this direction. It's going in that direction. It's going over here. It's going over there. And that if you think about people who tend to be accomplished in life, their mind is strong, and what we think about as strong, what, the way I'm defining my, their, a strong mind, is one that is capable of focus. So this is also like the, a point that I need to kind of make a, a, a segue with, which is that a lot of people think that they're lazy. And I get where you're coming from, like you think you're lazy, but if we really tunnel down, and this is a lot of what we're going to do today, is we're going to tunnel down and define in our mind what these broad terms mean. So if you think about someone who is lazy, there's someone who thinks about doing something but doesn't actually do it because then they start thinking about other things. Like, I need to clean my room, but then you're like, I don't feel like cleaning my room. Let me watch TV. You turn on the TV and then you're occupied by the TV. That is laziness, right? But like that's laziness is like a behavior. But if we think about what's going on in the mind, it is literally a mind that is fluctuant a mind that is dissipated, a mind that is going in different places. So laziness is a weak mind, and a weak mind is a dissipated mind, and a strong mind is one that is focused, that once you focus your mind and you point it in a particular direction, that's the direction that it goes to. And this is the problem of follow-through, right? So a lot of people have difficulty with follow-through. It's like one of the most basic problems. And so if we think about fundamentally how do we, how do we fix follow-through. It is to develop a concentrated mind, a mind that is capable of thinking about the same thing for a long period of time. And this is what I think is awesome about meditation because meditation is teaching you dharana, which is literally practicing the concentration of your mind on a single point without wavering. And if you can attain that skill, then you will no longer be lazy. And when I say no longer be lazy, what I mean is be lazy in the way that I'm lazy. So I'm still a lazy fucker. You guys saw, like, the dota on my, on my screen and stuff like that. So, like, like I still am lazy. I don't like to work. I don't enjoy working. But the difference between me and a lot of other people, they think that, oh, I'm, like, super hardworking. I have a lot of willpower. I'm super smart. I'm way smarter than, than I am. But once again, 
I've maintained from the very beginning, I'm really not that much smarter than anyone or may not be smarter than the average person who's watching the stream. The difference between me and all of you guys, and I'm making assumptions there, is that I have trained my mind to concentrate on one point. That's it. It's not an issue of laziness. It's not an issue of intelligence. It is an issue of I have spent the time and trained my mind to concentrate on one thing. That's it. So let's go back to follow through. So follow through is due to scattering of mind. Okay, so like, let's just think about this. One day I resolve to do something, right? So I say like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to stop playing video games or tomorrow I'm going to like wake up and I'm going to work out every day. And if you think about it, like if you study your mind in that moment, the resolve of your mind is actually like through the roof. The power of your mind is actually really high. It's not that you're like, half-assing your desire or your 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 desire to commit to something you're committed in that moment your commitment is real it's authentic you're like you're really hardcore you're not deluding yourself you're not faking it you're not pretending the power of your mind in that moment is actually really strong so why don't people follow through so you're like yeah tomorrow tomorrow i'm gonna do it i'm gonna go to the gym and you resolve to yourself if you think about it the power of the mind in that moment is is actually strong the next day, we say that your resolve wavers. So what does that truly mean? What goes on in the mind? Does it mean that the strength of your mind is different? So you, you may think so. You may think like, oh, I had all that passion and that, that energy then, and today I don't. But if I would argue that the strength of your mind is still the same. The analytical capability of mind is still the same. It's actually the focus that has been lost. That a resolution of mind is a high degree of focus on one area, and then you were focused, and I was looking over there, okay, gym, 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 gym. And then the next day, video games, Netflix, going to the grocery store, hanging out with my friends, going to the dog. Oh, gym, uh, I feel like hanging out with my dog. I got to take my dog for the walk. I got to shower. I got to clean. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to play some Dota. I got to watch some Netflix. So it's, it's not actually strength of the mind. It's not analytical capability. It's not intelligence. It's not laziness. It is concentration. It is, a, it is a fluctuation in your ability to focus. So your mind resolves in one direction, and then it resolves in the complete opposite. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. You wake up the next day, I'm going to play some Dota. Like, just think about how resolved your mind is. You think about that as a loss of resolution. It isn't a loss of resolution. You were super resolved to going to the gym yesterday, and you are equally resolved to do anything but go to the gym today. This is what procrastination is, right? You are, you are resolved to do anything but the work that needs to be done. So your mind is still has the same degree of, of resolution. It just, it, its focus is lacking. The resolution fluctuates. What you put your mind to fluctuates over time. So the fundamental problem with follow three and procrastination and all this shit is a lack of concentration on one point in the mind. So your mind thinks in one way and then thinks in the other way. So it's not about strength. It's not about laziness. It's about focus. So the goal of meditation is to develop a practice where you train your mind to focus on one point. And once it learns how to focus on one point, it's sort of like teaching a dog like a trick, right? Like once you train a dog, like once you train it how to be potty trained, then like it knows like where to use the bathroom. And at the beginning, it's tough. But once it knows where to use the bathroom, it always goes there and, and it does the bathroom where it's supposed to. And so the difference between me and a lot of the people who think that I'm way smarter or, or whatever, Harvard Andy, Five Head Andy, whatever, is it's not that I'm smarter. It's not that I have greater willpower. I'm still lazy. It's just that I have like leveled up my concentration skill. And by leveling up my concentration skill, what I'm able to do is I tell my mind to do something and then it actually like runs with that for a while. It doesn't run with it forever, but it runs with it longer than many other people. And I'd say that's the difference between like where I was, let's say at the age of 21 and where I am today, which is like 15, 16 years later, which is that I, I learned how to like concentrate my mind and then I started like concentrating it. And I'd say like, okay, I'm going to do some research. So I like sat down and like I did research for a while. Still played a lot of video games, still did a lot of procrastination. But I learned enough of the skill of concentration to where my mind was focused on one thing. So the next quality of the mind is, a, is that a mind is, is relaxed and is also like enjoyable. 
So if we think about people who describe a flow state, so there are, I get a lot of questions about a flow state. So a flow state is, is a state of mind where your mind is kind of like concentrated on one thing. And people find the experience of a flow state to be pleasant, right? It's like fun to be in a flow state. It's fun to sort of be lost in like a certain kind of work. Like if I'm sitting down and I'm painting, I don't paint. But I've talked to people who have painted and they sort of enter this meditative state where they really enjoy it. They're absorbed in the painting. They're doing exactly what they want to do. It's kind of fun. It's relaxing and it's concentrated. So those three things go together, right? Focus of the mind, relaxation, and to find something enjoyable. And so now let's think about this for a second. So like, do, like, what does that mean? If you say that a concentrated mind is enjoyable, but do, aren't like external things enjoyable? Like when we think about enjoyment, we don't think about a state of mind, right? We think about an external thing. So I say like, okay, I enjoy a movie or I enjoy a particular food or I enjoy spending time with someone. So like we think about enjoyment as coming from external things. We don't try to understand enjoyment in terms of ourself. So let's do that for a second. Let's try to see if we can understand the nature of enjoyment and how enjoyment relates to my, my mind. So it is my belief or my experience that enjoyment has to do with concentration of the mind. And if we think about enjoyable experiences, if we actually study our mind while we are enjoying something, we will see that our mind is concentrated. So if I go to the movies and like the movie is engaging, then my mind is fully focused on the movie. I mean, then my mind is fully focused on the movie, right? And that means I'm enjoying the movie. The definition of a movie that's enjoyable is one that fully concentrates your mind. And so let's think about what can cause a movie to not be enjoyable. Let's say someone rings, a, their cell phone rings, and they start talking in the theater. What does that do to your enjoyment? It shatters your enjoyment. What does that do to the concentration of your mind? The reason that that makes your your mind not have fun is because your concentration moves from the movie to the, the person who's talking on the cell phone. So we can see that as the concentration of your mind wavers, our enjoyment drops. And if we think about something like a boring movie, so what is a movie that we call boring? It's a movie that doesn't capture our attention and concentrate our mind on the movie. Our mind starts to wander. That's what happens when you're bored. Your mind starts to wander. And boredom is the opposite of enjoyment. Therefore, we can see that like enjoyment involves concentration of the mind and boredom involves a wandering mind and therefore is like a wandering mind is going to be an unenjoyable mind, right? It's kind of like simple. If you just stop and you look at the nature of enjoyment, you'll see that enjoyment involves concentration of the mind. And if you can shatter or change the concentration of the mind, that experience is, is going to be less enjoyable, Okay. I'm talking in sweeping generalizations, and I'm sort of doing that for educational purposes or instructive purposes. So you, you could also think about other things. Like, let's say you get a massage. So like when you get a massage, if the massage is like really good, your mind is concentrating on the massage. You're like feeling, let's say they're like, they're massaging your neck or your shoulders or something like that. And then like you're fully focused on that and you're like, man, that feels amazing. Or if you're eating food, like if you really, really enjoy food, if you eat something that's delicious, like take a bite of something and it's just like so delicious, your mind is concentrated on that point, right? Like that's kind of how it works. And then like imagine you're at a massage, like you're getting a massage and then your cell phone rings and then it sort of like breaks your immersion. And if it breaks your immersion, the concentration of your mind begins to waver. And as the concentration of your mind begins to waver, then you, you start to experience less enjoyment. So along with enjoyment, I'm sort of tossing in relaxed. We're going to kind of gloss over that for now. But the next point that I kind of want to talk about is that a, a concentrated mind is capable of greater understanding. It's not just analysis, but it's kind of like this issue of like a light bulb or a laser beam where if I concentrate my mind, the amount of understanding I'm able to gain from a particular set of like information is going to be way greater. So I've talked about this a little bit on stream before, but if you think about the process of studying, right? Like if I study, like let's say I have a textbook and the first page of the textbook, I'm reading it and I read it and I like don't understand it. So I read it again and I read it again and I read it again. And the fifth time I read it, I understand everything on the page. So let's just think about how that works from sort of like a, like a, a, a science or mathematics of the mind. Does that mean that with each time I read the paper, I gain 20% of the information? No, because there are other times where I can read the page once and I understand everything that the page says. So why do I sometimes have to read the page five times and other times I have to read the page once? 
It's because of the nature of the concentration of my mind. If I'm studying and someone is distracting me, then I have to read the page multiple times. The greater the distraction, the more I have to, to read the page. If I'm fully focused, then I have to read the page fewer times. So if we think about things like, let's say, Adderall or other medications that artificially improve your focus, like caffeine, these are things that increase the concentration of the mind, increase our ability to focus, and improve the quality of study. But at the end of the day, the key thing is it's not the Adderall makes you a better studier. It's that any time your mind is focused on one thing, you're able to understand more. So this has nothing to do with logic or analysis. It just means that we're sort of focusing our mind on one thing. And the more that you focus your mind, the, the easier it is to understand. And that applies to more than just studying as well. So just another way to think about it is like if I go to the library and I'm studying, but I'm stressed out about something, let's say that I'm worried that, um, you know, like my, my, one of my parents is sick. And if we think about how does worry affect our ability to study? So when we worry, our concentration from the piece of paper wavers to other things, right? The concentration of the mind dissipates, the mind becomes weaker, and we're unable to focus. As we're unable to focus, it becomes more difficult to study. So we can see that at the end of the day, it is all about concentration of the mind. So I'll give you guys a couple of other examples. So when I work with people, like some cool stuff sometimes happens. So I teach people how to meditate. And I think one of the biggest things that's responsible for their, the changes in their life is, is meditating. And people are kind of like, well, why should I meditate? What does it do for me? And so it's hard for me to kind of describe until now because I sort of sat down and, and concentrated on this and then figured it out. And that's why we started Stream Weight. But it all comes down to focusing the mind. So I had a patient who I had taught to meditate and they wanted to quit smoking. And so they would come to my office every week and we do this technique called motivational interviewing, which is sort of an evidence-based uh, a form of like psychotherapy or intervention that you can do that helps people stop using substances that they don't want to use. And we did motivational interviewing for a while. I'm a pretty good therapist. They were pretty committed and they still sort of like they would stop smoking for a while and they would continue smoking after they would like relapse and they'd start smoking again. They'd stop, start, stop, start. So this is all a wavering mind, right? So... They, as they continued to meditate, they ended up going hiking and they were doing some mountain climbing. And one day their mind just sort of focused on one point. So they were like, like climbing a mountain and they started like huffing and puffing. And they were like, oh, wow. Smoking is my breath. And the more I smoke, the harder it is for me to breathe. And my breath is more important to me than smoking is. And they quit. And they've quit smoking. It's just, it just happened. Like they had this moment of realization where, you know, intellectually that, that makes perfect sense. Logically that makes perfect sense. Like it's not any like rocket science that smoking and breath are related. Like everyone knows that. But it's not information or logic that actually causes people to change their behavior. It's understanding. And in that moment, I, I think this is because she was meditating among lots of other things. So you can argue about what happened there with her. But in my experience, this is what I see when I teach people to meditate, is that they have a degree of like focus and concentration in their mind where they sort of have this revelation and then they have some kind of understanding. And once they have that understanding, then their behavior changes. It's kind of like really hard to describe, but, but that's what I see time and time and time again. And this is what we call kind of the light bulb going off in someone's mind, right? They're like something clicks and then they change. And it's my belief that clicking is facilitated through the concentration of mind and that that concentration of mind leads to greater understanding because like your mind is fully focused, you're kind of fully zoned into that, and then you're able to understand things in kind of a different way. And the cool thing about this is that when I teach people to meditate, it's not just like one part of their life gets better. So when I, when I work with people, usually what happens is like a lot of different dimensions of their life gets better. They get happier in their job. Sometimes they change jobs. They get their, like, their marriages improve. They start to feel like better about themselves. Their confidence improves. They start to take better physical care of themselves. It's kind of bizarre. Like, they're, like every dimension of their life starts to change. And I, I don't think it's because I'm a miracle worker. I mean, I think in general, there's this saying in psychiatry that all boats rise together. So there's a water level. And like, if you have 
you know, arthritis and depression. If your arthritis gets better, then your depression gets better. If your depression gets better, there's your arthritis gets better. So there's a lot of evidence that suggests that this is just common within humans. But in my experience, I've seen the application of meditation work in each of their each dimension of their life. Because once you concentrate your mind and you understand the thinking of your mind better, you understand the things around you better, you understand work dynamics better, you work understand relationship dynamics better, you understand yourself better. So concentration of the mind sort of helps your mind be fully focused on analyzing all these problems. And so it sort of makes sense that all of them are going to improve. Because if you improve, if you level up the instrument through which you're like acting in all of these dimensions in your life, and then all of those dimensions are going to get better, right? It's not anything magical. It's sort of like if I'm playing an RPG and I have a sword and like I get a better sword, like my DPS against all kinds of monsters is going to go up. That's just how the mind works. So meditation is about developing concentration of the mind. And the first way to develop concentration of the mind is dharana. Dharana means a focusing practice. And we're going to get to that. Okay, I'm going to take a break for a second because I got to drink some water. And then also I want to just check in because I can't see chat. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to just check in with you guys. So like, how is this for y'all? Is this good? Like, is that... You guys with me? Okay. So like this is like a summary from like start to finish to understand these different things. Okay. So I'm going to talk for a few more minutes and then we're going to get to questions. Okay. All right. So now we're going to talk about gaming. Okay. So let's just think about like what effect does gaming... Okay, I'm going to interact a little bit with chat on this one. Okay. What effect does gaming have on the mind? What does gaming do to your mind? Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of different stuff, right? Great. So some people are saying focus. Some people are saying distraction. So when you are playing a game, is your mind thinking about a lot of things or thinking about one thing? That is focus, right? So we're not talking about... And good, someone said this depends. That is focus. That's what I'm not talking about. Like, so like distraction... And psychology and dopamine and neuroscience, we're not talking about any of that right now. We're just talking about understanding literally what is happening in your mind in a, in a moment. Is it focused or is it wavering? And people are saying depends, right? People are saying escape. So let's just think about that. The reason it is an escape is because your mind doesn't want to think about this. And when I play a game, I get lost in the game. I get focused in the game. So this is important. Video games create an artificial set, or not an artificial, they, they concentrate your mind on the game. And this, and remember, what does a concentrated mind do? It makes, a concentrated mind is enjoyable and relaxed, right? So your mind really, really enjoys gaming because gaming is an artificial sort of induction of like a dharana. It's almost like a dharana, like it focuses your mind and then you can forget about everything else. And that feels really good because it feels good to have a concentrated mind. Now let's think through a couple of examples in gaming where your mind wavers in its concentration and let's see what impact it has on like the enjoyment. So let's say that I'm playing the game. Like let's say I'm playing a game of Overwatch and I'm just focusing on like I'm playing Reinhardt and like I'm focusing on like like like, you know, just blocking people's, like I'm focusing on, you know, shielding whatever thing is moving. Actually, let's forget about Overwatch because I can't, my mind is not able to come up with the analogies well enough. Okay, so let's let's talk about Dota. So if I'm playing a game of Dota, let's say, um, yeah, because I, I just can't, I can't compute the analogies. So if I'm playing a game of Dota, like I'm focused on winning my lane, right? And I'm like super, super focused on winning my lane. I'm having fun. And then... Someone like TPs down to my lane and feeds. And then what does my mind do? Right? So like if I start thinking, if I stop thinking about the game 
and start thinking about what someone else is doing in the game, then I start to rage or tilt, right? That's true of all games. So forget about which, which one. But let's just think about at that point, what is my mind actually thinking about? It's not thinking about the game. It's thinking about this other person. And the more that I think about my teammates, what does that do to my enjoyment of the game? It drops like a fucking lodestone. The more that I just play the game, if I'm playing the game, and I'm like, let's see what we can do. Like, duh, duh, duh. like if I'm focused on the game, I'm just playing the game. But if I start thinking about my teammates, then my enjoyment of the game stop, goes down, right? And I can kind of like fluctuate. Like my mind is like, oh, this guy's a retard. This guy's an idiot. Like this guy's doing this. This guy's doing that. And then my enjoyment of the game goes down. And then when I start thinking about like, if I just play the game, like, so I, I know you guys have done this because everyone has done this, right? Where you play the game and then you have someone on your team who's bad, but you don't really think about that. You're like, okay, this guy's going to show up and he's going to die. But like, I'm going to still, like, I'm just going to play the game and we can still win. And the more that you focus on the game and like, there are people that die and whether you're playing Overwatch or Dota, they're, they're noobs that are dying like all the time. In any game, there are going to be noobs that are dying. So why is it that one game you rage and one game you don't? It's because in one game, your concentration or your focus remains on the game. And on the other one, your, your concentration dissipates and it starts to think about other people. So as long as you focus your attention on one thing and just play the game, then your performance improves, your enjoyment improves, and it's just an overall better experience. And people know that, right? So like when you mute your allies... What is that doing for your mind? It is literally helping your mind retain focus on the game. And if you mute your allies, you are going to have a better game. And like, so th this is what I'm trying to tell you guys is that the mind works in this way. Like if I'm, let's say like I'm having a great meal that I really enjoy. Like let's say I go to a sports bar and I'm having some wings and I'm watching, like, UT football. And then, like, someone comes in and starts playing the bagpipes. Like, that's not going to be a fun experience for me. If I can mute the bad bagpipes, I'm going to, like, go back to, like, enjoying the game. But the more that your mind is focused, not only do you perform better, you understand things better. It's more enjoyable. It's more relaxed. Right? Like, that's how the mind works. So gaming creates an artificial sense of focus. It's not artificial. I mean, it just creates a focused mind. That's why it's fun. What I mean by artificial is it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not because our we're training our mind to do that. It automatically does that for us. And generally speaking, when we talk about things being enjoyable, those are things that artificially cause our mind to focus on something. So even delicious food versus like less delicious food. The delicious food is going to cause our mind to be focused on. It's like, wow, like that flavor. Oh my God. There's like Meyer lemon in there and a hint of pepper. And you can really taste that, that rendered bacon fat. Like it's crisp. It's delicious. It's fresh. It's got a hint of heat. Like, you know, that's enjoyment. It's understanding, enjoyment, relaxation. They all come together. Thank you guys for the sub. Subs. Okay, so let's just, that's, that's my spiel. Okay, so I'm going to summarize. So at the end of the day, the first thing that we're going to learn is dharana. Dharana is the Sanskrit word for focus. It's spelled D-H-A-R-A-N-A, -A -A, dharana. Okay, what is dodged? I don't know what that means. 